So in today's video, we are going to be looking at the Bitex and the Nerd QX LAN upgrade. So we previously made a video just looking at it in terms of exploring how it works, in terms of just looking at the Discord, looking at the actual pieces and how it functions. And the creator of the LAN mod got in touch and sent me two of the versions. So we have a Bitex one and we also have a Nerd QX one. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to assemble it and then actually how to get the LAN mod functioning. And lastly, we're going to go through some problems that I encountered on the way. So it's a pretty easy setup in terms of building it. The Nerd QX is going to be the easier one. So if you do have a Nerd QX, it's probably going to be very easy for you to set this up. The BitX one, you do have to put a little bit of things together, but the Nerd QX one is pretty much plug and play. So we'll start off with the Nerd QX one, but we'll show you both the assembly parts right now. Okay, so this is for the BitX. What you have here is something that mounts on top of the BitX, and then you have these eight pin plugs. Plug one side into here, and the other goes into the LAN module there, and plugs in by that side. And then you have nuts and bolts, and then spacers, and also these things which are called pogo pins, which actually stick into the back of the BitX so you can communicate with the whole module. So I believe that this can be run on the Gamma and the Supra because they have these ports at the back. If you're running an older model like the Max, it doesn't actually have the BAP port on the back of it. So you won't be able to do this upgrade with older models. So it needs to have this on the back of it for you to actually assemble it and stick these pins through there so that it can communicate to the LAN module. So let's do the Bitax setup first. What we're gonna do is we're going to assemble it right now. So let's move this down and I'll show you this. The audio might be a bit loud. So first thing you wanna do on here is put in the pogo pins. One thing you need to note, these ones are locked in place at the bottom and these ones actually spring downwards if you see right there. So these are gonna be on the top connecting into this part. So these six pins were there and then the static ones are going to actually just drop in there. So if you just drop them in there, they are gonna be loose, but we can actually tie it all together with this. So that's what it should look like, the static ones on the bottom and then the springs on the top. And easiest way I've found of doing this is if we bring it up here, what I would do is put these screws through hold them in place. So just hold them with your thumb and your other finger, put the spacer through. So the spacers are on there now, and then put this on the back. So it's gonna be in this orientation, not this orientation because it's not actually gonna fit onto there. So it has to be technically backwards if you're looking at the text there. And if you do this right, it should drop in and just sit on the pins. And then you take your nuts like you have here and you just screw them onto these screws by here. So that's how you want it. Just snug onto the pogo pins. You can see them in there attaching into the back and then on here attaching into the board. And that's pretty much it. So one thing I want to note is that sometimes you can tighten these too tight and it shifts the pogo pins out of place. And you'll know when you've done it wrong because when you plug this in to the whole power supply, this red light will not show up. So this red light needs to be on. We'll give you an example of that in a minute. Last step is to connect the wire to both of them. So you go in on this side, it's got a little clip by here and that feeds into this little divot by there. So like that, as you can see through by there. And then you want to plug this into here. So you need to ensure that the red line is facing that way. So facing towards this black component by there. So overall, this is what it should look like. You have the wires connected into there and then your last wire connected into your LAN port. 
So that's simply the Bitax setup. So let's get into the Nerd QX setup. As I said, Nerd QX, a lot easier to set up. Don't have to fiddle around too much with it. So like the Bitax, you want to plug your wire in. So you plug it into the LAN port like so. And then what you want to do is you want to take off your LCD screen from your Nerd QX. And to do that, all you have to do is give it a little pull and it should just pull off like so. So that's taken it off, put it down there. And here is the LAN mod for the Node QX. As I said, it's kind of plug and play. You have all these pins which fit into here on your Node QX. And then you have a backboard which fits the LCD back on. So it's just like this. and give it a push down and then take your LCD again, just wiggle it down into there. And it should look like that. So just a kind of add on addition to it. And then all you do is plug this side into this by here. And there you go. That's the same setup that you're seeing with the bit axe and the same LAN port setup, but this is a lot easier than the bit axe just to assemble. So now we can move on to the next step, which is actually plugging it in and installing or flashing the firmware onto the bit axes. So I'm just gonna give you an example right now of what it should look like when you plug it in, just to make sure that everything is working. So I'll show you that on the bit axe because it kind of applies the same for the new QX as well. So we're gonna plug this in right now. And what you need to show, or what you need to be showing, is this red light on the LAN port. So this is currently defaulted to Wi-Fi mode because of a different video, but let's get it set up and I'll bring you over to the computer and we can show you how to actually flash the firmware onto this. So I recommend actually plugging in the LAN port first and then actually powering it on, as that seemed to work better then powering it on, then plugging in the LAN port whilst you've updated the firmware. So kind of make sure that everything's connected first and we need to show you what that looks like in terms of the LAN port as well. So once you plug it in to your router, you need to check that you have a green light and then a flashing amber light as well. So green light just means you have a connection and then the amber light means that it's actually trying to send information basically. Uh, that's a kind of real basic way of telling you how that works. But there are some problems we'll get into in terms of the router because that was causing a problem for us in the start. But as long as you have this setup, it should be plug and play from here. And when it comes to installing the software, we'll show you how to do that now. So let's head over to the computer. Okay, so once you've loaded up your AxOS here, what you're gonna wanna do is you need to install the firmware and also the UI. So a different AxOS, and the actual firmware to enable the mod. So in the Discord, uh, BTC Tech Nerd Army, they have two chats in here, Bitax LAN and then Nerd QX LAN. So for the Bitax, it's obviously gonna be this one. And for the Nerd QX, there is files in here, which are associated with different LAN mods for different models. So you have the Nerd QX++, and then the Nerd QX+, Nerd QX, New Octax, so there's different ones for whatever miner you're using on it. This can be done, as I said, on basically all the Nerd QX models and all the BitAx models which have the BAP port actually on the back of them. But I will leave links to both of the GitHubs, one for the Nerd QX, one for the BitAx by here. So I will note that there was some kind of failures in the previous release, so version 3, where if you installed, I believe it was the firmware before the actual UI, the Bitax would basically give up on you. But I believe that's fixed now and we can show you some other problems that we ran into. But to install the firmware and the AxOS, you just wanna download the ESP miner and the triple W bin file from here. So this is gonna be for the Bitax. So you can just click on there and click on there and it should download into your browser by there. So there we have our two Bitax firmwares and the UI update. And then all we need to do is go to update on 
the original AxOS. First, we're going to update the AxOS, and then we're going to update the firmware to show you what it should look like for you on your side. So first, you want to update the AxOS. So you just click Browse, and then you go and find your file which you downloaded. So we have ours on our desktop by here, and it's going to be the triple W bin by here. Click on that, and it's going to actually reflash it onto your Bitex right now. And then it's going to refresh the page to kind of update it. But the current version is not going to change. That's one thing I want to note. It is going to refresh like it just did then. But the current version is actually technically still on the original firmware that it's been using. So now we need to update the firmware, which we click Browse, and then ESP Miner. And that's going to then restart the Bitax overall. So you have to wait for it to restart back up. So once that's restarted and you've seen it restart back up, you should have the LCD on and you just want to click reload. And then you can come over to network where it should show you your Wi-Fi and your Ethernet options. So one thing I want to note right here is that as long as this is detected, you should be fine. There is a fallback error that was happening for me at least which was down to my router. It wasn't connecting based on the internet speeds that the module was giving. So the LAN module works at 100 megabytes per second, but my internet goes as high as one gigabyte per second, which was causing a fallback state on the actual miner. So what happens is they're both trying to negotiate a speed. My router was saying it wants one gigabyte. The module that we're using for the Bitax was saying that it wants 100 megabytes and they could never agree on it, and it would just fall back to Wi-Fi. So the workaround is going to be in your router settings. I can't really show you the router settings because it's going to be very different for everyone else out there, but if you do run into this problem, it's mainly going to be a problem with your internet negotiating speeds with the actual LAN module, just because it's a little bit older than the updated routers that are out there right now. The way that we got around it is we got a switch that would actually force it down to 100 megabytes per second. Even though it was trying to give one gigabyte, we would just force it down to 100 megabytes per second, and that would actually force the connection. But as long as the module is detected, you should be fine by here. And the next step is to click onto Ethernet. What this is going to do is is actually going to show you in the Bitax LCD if you do have a connection. Currently, we're not in Ethernet mode. Just by clicking it, we do need to restart. So we've taken the switch off of the router. So I'm going to show you what it looks like if this does fail. So we're going to restart the miner. And what it's going to do is it's going to fall back to the Wi-Fi mode. So you'll know if you've done this right, because it will not fall back to Wi-Fi. But this is an example of it falling back to the Wi-Fi mode. So we click restart here. That's going to restart our Bitax. And as you can see there, it just flicked over to Wi-Fi. So that wasn't a cut in the screen, that was in real time. It basically falls back to Wi-Fi because it can't establish a connection from the router to the actual LAN module. So what it's, what it, so what it's supposed to do is create a different IP address for your miner and basically assign a different one. And then in the settings, it will show you what that IP is for the other miner. And it will turn this one off and reload the miner into a different IP address at the top of your screen. So let's go through the whole process with the nerd QX. That is just some troubleshooting. It's going to be nearly the same process that we're going to show you. And then we'll show you it working for the actual Ethernet connection. But the nerd QX and the BitAx is going to be the same thing when you see it working. It should show a LAN IP address, which you can log into. And it will show you the Ethernet connection being established. So let's head over to the Nerd QX. It's basically the same process, but we'll show you the finished product at the end. So like with the Bitax, you have to get the firmware and I'll leave a link to the GitHub as well. So you have your V1 LAN by here. And as I said, this works for pretty much every Nerd QX variation that you see there. So you want to select the one that works for you. I don't think there's particularly any difference. It's just going to be the actual dashboard displaying different things in the AxOS. So we have our node QX++ bin. So we need to download this and download this as well. 
and then we do the exact same thing. So you come to settings, scroll all the way down. So website is going to be the triple W file here. And you just click on your file and click flash. And that's going to restart the XOS or the node QXOS. And once that's done, you'll come up with the same kind of ethernet options that we'll show you now. And then we need to update the firmware as well. So that's going to reload like you see there. And um, what it adds onto here is the network mode from Wi-Fi network to ethernet mode. And what will happen is I'll show you in a minute, but this will actually switch to ethernet and it will give you the IP down by here. So to load the firmware on, it's a little bit different because you've already updated the website, but click on this file by here, click on node QX and then click flash again. So that's also going to reset your miner as well. So it should tick up live. Okay, so now we're going to show you a video of it working. Currently, we've actually taken off the switch from our router because it's messing with a bunch of other things, but I can show you a quick video of what it should look like because we're trying to get this video out quickly enough as I didn't really want to mess with my router too much. I just wanted to get it up and running and then we'll think of a more permanent switch in the future. So this is a video of it actually working when you click onto the ethernet side. So as you can see there, you go into system, you can see the node QX. This is just for the plus version, but we were using the plus plus. You have your ethernet option by there, like we just saw. And once you click that, it's gonna ask you to reset the network. So you wanna click on restart and that's actually going to restart it. Now it shouldn't fall back onto the Wi-Fi if you've done everything correct. But as I said, there are router problems that you have to go with. And if you look there, it has refreshed back into a different IP address. So the other one is going to stay on, but it's also just not going to report anything for the moment. The LAN part of it is going to report. So you can see there, Ethernet configured, IP assigned, and there's your IP and MAC address for your devices. So that's what it should look like. The other one is going to refresh and you can click it back to Wi-Fi if you want to. As I said, you've got to make sure that the cable is red. So, so there's a red light on your LAN module. And then there's also a green and orange light on your Ethernet cable. If you are struggling with anything, some other quick fixes are resetting your router or changing out the Ethernet cable if it's not getting a connection because it's probably faulty. And then lastly, just giving the Bitex or the Node QX wires a little wiggle just in case anything is not properly fitted in or suited in. So that's basically it in terms of the video. If you guys are struggling with anything, hop in the Discord because I went through a quite a long process of trying to troubleshoot this. So if you are having any problems, please leave them in the Discord and everyone in the community will try to help you out. I wanna give a massive thanks to the creator of the land mod for sending over all of the bits. Uh, so I'll leave his Twitter and the links to the GitHub in the description below and where you can actually buy the product. So it's from, so I believe that GoBur is actually selling them. They're just acting as kind of the partner of the creator to sell them. Currently, a lot of people have been saying that the US shipping is a bit too much, but if we can get a batch out to the US, then that can be pre-sold or sold on later down the line. And hopefully you guys get them set up and start using them. If you want to send me a picture of it on Twitter, please feel free. Just tag me and I'll give it a like and comment on it. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for more content like this.